Hi guys. It's uh, just gone one o'clock in the afternoon and uh, I finally got the flat to myself. I had my brother stay last night. Um, because, uh, well, his bitch ass girlfriend kicked him out. A couple of days ago, apparently, we stayed at friends the night before. But, uh, yeah. Um, she's just a nut, a nut job, is the best way I can put it. Anger problems. <laughs> He's literally got a bin liner of a few clothes because allegedly she won't let him have any more. Uh, and the van. But, um, put it this way, if he didn't actually manage to get the van, she wouldn't have let him have that either. So he wouldn't have been able to work, to earn his money, blah, blah, blah. Because she is just that spiteful. But naturally, her friends and family aren't going to see it that way. You know, she's a complete saint with the sun shines out of her ass. But, uh, yeah, perhaps it does, if you're part of her family. But it seems that if it's anything to do with my brother's family, we're scum of the planet. And we're the ones with the problems. But yeah, the only reason we've got a problem with her is because she's got a problem with us to begin with. <coughs> like, uh, she won't let us see our niece. Uh, and won't let mum see her granddaughter. Mum would love nothing more but to see her granddaughter. But over the past year, she has had uh, a disabled stepdad of mine to look after, but that doesn't seem to be a valid excuse. But, uh, not to her, anyway. Anywho, I'm not going to rant about that. Uh, I'm not sure if my brother's coming back today. It depends if he can find somewhere to stay or not for the night. And if he's got an ounce of brain cells, he wouldn't go back to her. But again, I don't run his life. It's up to him. <laughs> um, I could kidnap him and keep him here, just to, you know, keep him away from bitch beaches. I would, but I can't. <laughs> I can't tell him what to do. Um, well, sort of unfortunately, in some ways. Um... Anyway, again, this is one thing I like about Facebook, because you do see some crazy stories, and that does give me something to talk about. Um, Mum come up earlier, and we've just, I've just got back from walking around town with her, and the first story I see on Facebook is uh, this guy. It's from the, um, the Telegraph. And the headline is, Man who cut, cut off his ears to look like a parrot goes on Jeremy Kyle's show and says it's normal. Right. You're probably thinking I'm going to slay him for looking weird, but I'm not, actually. Because, um, for starters, normal, to me, is subjective. It depends on one's own interpretation of what normal is. So, for example, he probably thinks that is normal to do, but someone else won't think it's normal. You know, there is, it's not a black and white, being normal is not black and white, not to me anyway. Because I'm certain most of us will do something that we consider normal, but another person wouldn't. But the only, <laughs> the only thing that makes me chuckle, right, he did this, he says, to look like a parrot. Right, he's even got like a tattoo around his face that is in the colours and feathers of a parrot. My question is, that doesn't, well, uh, yeah, is how many parrots do you know full of facial piercings? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, one where his earlobes were, this big one through his nose, I think that one's there on his bottom lip, some sort of implants around, actually they could be related to a parrot looking at those, I'm not sure about that one though, you know, <laughs> since when do parrots have all those piercings? Actually if I'm not quite mistaken, it looks like he's had his nose shaped into a beak, parrot's beak. 
Now, you see, some people will um, will obviously no doubt say that's not normal, that's bloody weird. He's a weirdo, he's a freak, but to me, if we if he got rid of all these weird piercings, I don't do piercings anyway. <laughs> but, um, you know, if that's what he likes, that's what he likes. He can put as many as he wants on. But I actually like the tattoo work. I actually think that's pretty good. Although he does look weird with no earlobes. <laughs> but like I said, that's it's entirely up to him if that's what he wants to do. Reply to a friend on Facebook. Bear with me two seconds. Yeah, despite the cruddy weather. <laughs> oh, Mum bought me an early birthday present. Let me just get a light on. There we go. There it is. Now, Lidl's were doing these uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, and I can't remember. What about seven, eight pounds, something like that. It weren't too much. But I actually found this one in the Katali charity shop and they had a three pound price tag on it. And uh, Mum got them to put it away for for me. Uh, I think it was Monday, Monday or Tuesday when she was uptown. And uh, we went and picked it up today. It's a decorative figurine. Charming aut autumnal, autumnal decoration. Right. And it's still sealed. Still sealed with the original tape tags. And little round tags they put on. Let me sit there for a minute. Outie pops. Yeah, because for those that don't know, squirrels are my favourite animal. It is actually made of wood with um, a fluffy... Oh, there is wood underneath the tail. But it's quite fluffy. It's actually quite nice. I don't know why he's sniffing his own tail. Maybe he's got a nut hidden in it. It's not very heavy. Yep. got what information. Well, it's got... I'm not actually sure if it's meant to spell in, but that's what it spells. I-A-N with a number beside it. I assume that's something like an IA number or something. Delta Sport NR. Then it's got the version 8th 2015, so that was made this year. Well that looks German. Ah, yeah, Ham Hamburg. So this must have been made in Germany. The Delta Sport Handle Sconton. Scontor, rather. Yeah, that does sound Germanish. I actually do think Lidl's do import a lot of their household stuff from Germany, and I have to say, it's not bad stuff. I've got quite a few things that I've gotten from Lidl's over the years, and uh, it really isn't that bad stuff. Crivet is a good st um, brand for a sort of a cheaper alternative to a really really expensive top notch top notch sorry tool um yeah i can't i can't complain too much to be honest i know there's some people there that out there that won't like littles because it is like a, a budget store if you like um but to be honest there's a heck of a lot of stuff out of there i've had including food that isn't just cheaper than anywhere else. It actually tastes pretty good. If it doesn't taste as good as brand names, sometimes they taste better. It just depends what you get. Uh, anyway, I managed to get the door back on the hinges. Because uh, obviously with my brother asleep on the floor and having to get up for work and that this morning, I um, retired to the bedroom quite early last night. And I just want to block the noise out of the TV and the noise of me clanging around in here as much as possible. So I just stuck out on the hinges. It doesn't shut properly. Mind you, it's never shut properly anyway. 
It will, if I give it a little boot. <laughs> but then, because of that, it gets stuck. So, yeah, I'll get a new door. <clears throat> Again. <laughs> right. Um, all these fire engines, I've got to sort out my fire engine. I'm going to get them on top of that as a little display. Obviously, minus those uh, tools. But, uh, yeah, ever since um, I started talking to this other guy hev on our Facebook, heavily into um, the fire service, sort of uh, got my interest going a bit more. I've always had an interest, hence the Lego fire station I've built and all the other Lego fire engines and things I've got dotted about. And the big pile of die casts in the bedroom. <laughs> But I thought that would be nice to have a specific themed display out somewhere and something different so I decided to pull out all my fire engines and uh, I'll go through and I'll pick the best ones and I'll put out on there, the rest will go back in the cupboard um, Anyway, Mum's now on her way to uh, the hospital Nothing's wrong just a routine checkup for a lady her age. <coughs> uh, that does mean um, stepdad's had to go with her because she won't feel comfortable enough to drive after the test. So she may not feel comfortable to drive for at least 24 hours, maybe a bit long, or it may not um, affect her at all this time. It, it depends. Um, should be going over, or will be going over to hers at some point this weekend, and I'll bring that um, Saracen mountain bike frame back. I did ask her to today, but I did ask her last night before we uh, went to bed, and I forgot to remind her when I was on the phone to her this morning, <laughs> so it's partly my fault as well. I knew if I didn't remind her she'd forget, but that does help if I actually remember to remind her. <laughs> Never mind, no rush for it. I just wanted something to do and to do a little video on it, but uh, never mind. That'll wait till the weekend. Uh, I'm trying to get those forks out. I've got some more of the sofa on the landing dismantled. Um, well, I forgot to clear the mess up last night, so I've <laughs> I found a. It was a polite note, I can't complain, but I found a note on my outside cupboard door saying, Andy, could you please clean up the, up this mess? So I went out there with the G-Tech and just got the bits of wood up off the carpet. I was going to do it last night, but um, I completely forgot with my brother and what not being here. So, uh, what are you doing? So that's why I sh shoved those, the end display towards the radiator a, a bit. Because he has a habit of jumping up onto the table this side, um, which meant, because the boards were hanging over quite far, it sort of flicked the boards and these boards would go everywhere. <laughs> Who's got an interest in that? Does it smell nice? I don't know, I've not smelled it. I'm not an animal like you. I don't, I don't smell things. <laughs> not unless I get a whiff of it anyway. Uh, I'll scrap over there to go at some point, I hope. And that's another typical autumn day. Look at the tree. November, and look at the tree. But then again, ever since I've lived here, these trees out front have held onto their leaves the longest. Most trees everywhere, everywhere else, like the ones right over the back there, have almost lost all their leaves. These ones? Nah. Still clinging on to them. Maybe by the end of November they will eventually be bare. <laughs> but yeah, these ones out front. Look at that, that little one there. That's still mostly green. There's a little bit of yellow on top. I don't, I don't know. It's just these trees seem to um, take a while to shed their leaves. I mean, there's shitloads on the ground. <clears throat> but there's still shitloads to come off. I'm kind of glad my trailer's full of crap at the minute, because that's keeping the leaves out. 
You know, you look out this back window. Let's go to the kitchen, actually, it'll be easier. See. These have nearly lost all their leaves. There's not a lot on them to... Well, that means I can see across there. <laughs> That's the only advantage, I think, about this time of year. I can see a bit more. You know? I can actually see more of this yard out here and more of that building. There's not much to look at, but... During summer, with all the leaves on it, I don't actually see a lot. Mind you, I don't look, look a lot. I look out of the window a lot, anyway. Just trying to be nosy. Oh, there's still a lot to skip out there. Can't see nothing interesting in the skip, though. <coughs> actually sure what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. I could finish breaking the other arm off that sofa over right there. Because my plan is, as I don't really have anyone to help me take that, well, what's left of it down, is to break both arms off, and that should make the centrepiece light enough for me to drag down on my own. I mean, I'm not a very strong person. Not, I haven't got much upper body strength. Um, I've got strong legs from all the cycling I've done for the past 20 odd years, but um, it's really crap, crappy, because uh, I haven't done any upper body strength. I really should, I don't know, get some dumbbells or something that I could lift perhaps a little while at night. Although um, I've got problems with this elbow for some reason. I don't know what it is, it just, it's been hurting, and along with the shoulder at the minute. But keep acting up, I may have to go to the doctor. That is, I've got both joints acting up at the minute, that's pissing me off. <clears throat> and then my knee was acting up a little while ago, but that's uh, settled now, so I could go out there and just finish bashing that up. Because if I can get the um, actual sofa base down, then I can finish breaking it up outside. I'll just leave that at the end of the building for the um, victory cleaner to uh, collect one day. Or for someone to collect for firewood. I'm saving some of the wood for firewood for mum. Um, pretty much everything else has been going in the bottom of the um, bins out there. The big men have took it. I didn't think they would with that sitting in there, but they have actually taken it. There's one I put several large bits in with one bin bag, so you could still see all the wood, and they still took it. So I didn't think they would. I didn't think they were supposed to. Not unless, um, you know, everything was um, in black bags. That's the rule. But um, they took it, so they obviously haven't got a shit to give. <laughs> So I'll just put some more in there and throw me black bags on top again and put some more in. I don't want to put the whole thing in in one go because um, I was going to fill all the bins up and then no one else in the block will be able to put their rubbish in and that won't be fair. So I've just been putting a few bits in here and there. Oh, pardon me. I set up and keep them the good bits of wood for um, firewood. I'll take that. Might take that over to Mum's this weekend. Actually, when I go over. Bloody hell! It's dark in here. You now some people get that. Um, they call it that depression this time of year, but I don't think I do. Probably because I like the cooler weather better than summer. But I like summer, because that's when there's more um, activities. You know, towns and villages have all their fates, and we have our fun day, and there's the Chroma Carnival, and there's various classic car shows, and, you know, there's lots of things going on that you can do. This time of year, there's Sweet F.A. There's nothing. You know, mostly probably because of the weather. 
and there isn't many indoor venues that you can hold certain things in. Oh, and there's no car boots this time of year, that's no end of season. I think it's usually end of September, October time they stop. And then they'll start up again Easter, April. Is that light on my lens or is there a bit of muck in there? No, it is just light. <laughs> oh, pardon me. A bit of wind. No surprise there. Oh, what day are we on Thursday? I should have known that because it's market day in town. <laughs> Thursday the 5th? Yes. Yeah. So what day is my birthday on? It's on the 9th. What day is that? It's the 5th. It's Monday. Bloody hell, that's coming up quick. That's scary. Someone replied to your comment on the Telegraph's link. Douglas something or other. Okay, Dougie boy, what have you put on there? Lily Have you seen his power? <laughs> <laughs> Someone offered me a road bike for twenty pounds, but I'm skint till next week. Absolutely skint, which is a shame because I'd have liked to have gone and taken a trip up to the uh, recycling centre this weekend, but I'll have to wait till next weekend. See if I can find any half decent bikes up there that I can strip parts off of as well. Frames is ideal, which is basically well, what they class as a frame is a bike with no wheels, and they do those for three pounds. It's they've pretty much got a set price system. If the bike is relatively complete, they sell it for um, five pounds because they sell it as spares or repairs, because. Uh, nearly or pretty much every bike that'll end up down the tip does need work of some sort so because they can't guarantee you could ride it away they have to sell it spares or repairs so they sell them for five pounds which is still a decent price even if you just wanted it for parts so you know if you're not wanting to go to a cycle shop to uh, um, have repairs done Go down the recycling centre and buy a whole bike. Buy a whole bloody bike. Take the parts off you want to fix yours. And then go take the rest back. <laughs> um, yeah. Although I do plan to build that Saracen up, but there's, there's a few depending factors. I've been toying with the idea of making it a single speed. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like that idea. Not with that style of frame. That would need to be done on sort of like a jump style bike. Um, which I don't have. Well, actually I do. My brother's got the frame up there. Which I should pull my finger out and get that done. Now that I've got the single speed. And I've got crank sets in the um, box in the cupboard. Um, where you can actually change the chain ring. The chain rings bolt to it. So I could easily just have one of them with one chain ring bolted on it and I've got a single speed crank. I'll actually give um put that to some use as well. And that'll uh, get it up and then if you or get it up and running I should say and if he wants to sell it it's up to him. And that'll be another one done and out of my bloody way. <sighs> And I've got his PC to do. But I can't afford the RAM for that yet. That'll be a, a little while before I can afford that. Uh, my buddy on Facebook, he's got some more um, Lego poly bags for me. And some more connects. So I can add that to me box in the wardrobe. <sighs> I've been going over to Mum's this weekend, I haven't got a lot planned. Um, I 
What the hell? I made that comment about the um, bloke cutting his ears off. I don't know, about 20 minutes ago, and I've actually got 20 likes already. 30... 33 minutes ago. And I've got 20 likes already. <laughs> I'm flaming more. Don't people actually do anything apart from sit on Facebook these days. <laughs> One of the best things about getting older, knowing someone is an asshole before they even spring, speak, spring, speak. shared a thing from the um, North Norfolk, or the Norfolk Fire and Rescue Service live feed. Two malicious calls in Yarmouth within half an hour, within 30 minutes, um, on the 4th of November 2015. First one was at 4.07pm. Uh, two appliances, hang on, I've got to hit Seymour. Two appliances from Great. What are you doing? You're distracting me. Two appliances from Great Yarmouth attended reports of a kitchen fire. This was found to be a malicious call. 4th of November 2015 at 4.36, almost half, yeah, almost exactly half an hour later. Great Yarmouth, appliances from Great Yarmouth and Galston attended report of a kitchen fire on Cunningham Avenue. That was a false alarm malicious. Now, I'm not a saint. I have done things wrong in the past. I'm sure most of us did lots of naughty things when we were younger. <laughs> I know I used to get up to mischief. I'm sure most of us did. You could tell quite a few funny stories. But the one thing I never, ever did was malicious call the emergency services. And I never would. It's, it angers me that people will do that. And what actually angers me more is where people have done that, especially in areas like Manchester. And it probably happens in other areas, but I've only seen well, the news reports I can remember where this happens has been in sort of like the Manchester area is where they'll call a fire brigade, or start a fire in the street deliberately, call a fire brigade, and as soon as the fire brigade turn up, they start pelting them with fireworks and rocks and bricks, and, and I'm thinking, why? The firemen are there to save your lives, and you're abusing them like that. I just hope people like that actually have a house fire and fucking die in it, because they don't deserve to be on the planet. If they're that evil and twisted that they're actually going to attack people that are there to help, then they don't deserve the fucking help. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh there, but... It really does piss me off when people do that. Mind you, if I was a farmer and I'd just turn the friggin' hose on them, I'll soon stop it then, because I'll be knocked flat on their ass. Especially if they've got the main hose reel out. That will just knock them straight off the feet. I'll probably rip the skin straight off them because there's that much water pressure coming out of one of them. You were cutting for. You smell them. <laughs> smell something, my fingers. I've got to learn to stop being a pig. <laughs> Because I pigged out on those refrigerators last night. They were on offer in Sainsbury's. 60p a bag, so I bought three of them. Pigged all three of them. And a half, a yeah, about a half a large of 
half a I'll get it out in a minute. Half a large bag of minstrels and I felt like shit afterwards. <laughs> so it wasn't a good idea. That was nice though. Although every time I burped afterwards I could taste the the, the um what are they, southern fried chicken, so I could taste them every time I burped. Mm. Right, so I'm going to end the video. Got about two minutes before this will stop and restart on its own anyway, so I might as well end the video here. If I think of anything else later, as long as I don't get any more distractions, and I can make another video, can't I? So, uh, yeah. As always, thanks a lot for watching if you made it this far. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it's much appreciated. And, uh, of course, to those 85 subscribers I've got, if you've got any ideas whatsoever you want me to do, if you want me to do something a little bit crazy, so long as I can do it, I will do it. Um, just bear with this crappy camera until after Christmas. Because uh, after Christmas I do plan to get a new camera as soon as possible. I do hate using this one. It's doing its job, but I don't like using it. So, uh, yeah. Um, you all take care, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.